and welcome to the Property and Funds Virtual Showcase. This is the second event in our series which we have recently launched. We are proud to be hosting this at this such a unique time. You know, for this as a sector for us, from a wholesale investor perspective, we actually started out showcasing growth companies. And then we realized amongst our audience, there was obviously a strong interest in property and funds, which I'll go to, which I'll get to in a second. The reason for this now is that Effectively, whether it be the access to cheap money, whether it be the desire for yield, or simply the opportunistic nature of our investor subscriber base, the interest in property and funds has gone through the roof over the last few months. When we actually noticed it was actually in the, in the lead up to emergence. So as we're leading up to emergence, we noticed that at least 35 to 40% of the companies that we were working with were either related to property and funds in some way, shape or form. They covered obviously the funds management side, the property side, but also fintech and also prop tech. These areas have become such a strong staple of the Australian economy and have become even more important now as we go through these unique times. And on our database, we see this interest growing daily. So this, is, this timing for us is really important. The next part is why is that when we actually first started hosting this, we realized that even though, even though most investors found out about Wholesale Investor because of our work with early stage and growth companies, we know that part of your portfolio is typically allocated to property and funds. Now, with that, we did our first event, our first annual showcase in 2012, and we were absolutely blown away the response. So as I mentioned, this has become a staple for us in once a year, we like to put on showcase some of the fund managers and some of the leaders in the property space that we actually get the opportunity to work with. We've had some incredible success stories in that time. In one of the first companies we worked with was Folkestone and obviously they had an acquisition last year and it had been a fantastic success story in the Australian space. 
We've seen companies start out their promotion with us and grow into quite sizable fund managers in that time. And this is part of the journey and why we actually love working with this space and we love watching the founders and the managers grow over time as we're working with them. As part of today's event, what's really important for us is the engagement. How the, found, how the people involved, how the companies involved know the visibility, the traction and so forth is the engagement. And the way we've set up this live stream is the page that you're looking at us on is perfectly set up for you to simply and easily engage with the companies that are presenting. For example, each company has a deal room set up, it has an overview, a profile. So whilst you're listening to their presentations, you can actually request access and go through their information at the same time. So you can be actively looking at their deal whilst listening to the presentations. This is the most streamlined method for us to provide this information to you. And with that, part of what we're doing is if you have other people in your ecosystem that are also interested in property funds or early stage companies or prop tech, fintech, we encourage you to invite them to share this stream afterwards. Because for us, how we grow this ecosystem is via word of mouth. We work day and night to try and build the potential and to build the visibility of this space. So we encourage you to share the experience, to share the presentations, to engage with the companies. In fact, the companies that are presenting right now we've made, have made themselves available for Q&A inside their Chris deal room. So any questions that you have, you can ask them right now whilst they're actually presenting during the, during the live stream. So from here, what's really important is that we encourage you to connect, be active, and you know, communicate with the, with the opportunities. Wholesale Investor is incredibly proud of the opportunity to present the companies to you, and we're also incredibly proud of the partners that have participated in helping make sure that we're able to continue providing this service for our ecosystem. Thank you for joining the Property and Funds Virtual Showcase. We hope you enjoy the presentations. Our first presenter of the day is Cal Doggett, Managing Director of Properties and Pathways, a dynamic commercial property investment firm. Cal will go over their unique hands-on approach to unlocking valuable and exclusive syndicated investment opportunities. Properties and pathways, we like to keep it simple. So let's start with the end in mind. Why are you here? We assume you're here to create real wealth. You're here to find secure, high yielding investments backed by fantastic tenants that are going to deliver outstanding results. But not just that, you're here to find the right property in the right locations and managed with absolute transparency. So then why are we here? Well, we're here because we believe that we found the right properties in the right locations and we've thrown these assets together into a diversified property trust, which ticks those boxes and, and answers those questions. And we've invested alongside you to put our money where our mouth is. I'm Cal Doggett, the managing director of properties and pathways and over the next seven minutes, all I hope to do is excite you and energize you to the same extent that we are about this opportunity. To excite you enough, just enough, to take that next step in your wealth creation journey alongside us. So why Properties and Pathways and why Pathway 12 Unit Trust? What is it about Properties and Pathways that, that's different than the rest? What is it about this investment opportunity that's different? And it starts and ends with this statistic, an 88% reinvestment rate. Now this talks to a whole host of things. Yes, it means we're proud to have a very loyal investor base, but we've got to look beyond that. We've got to understand what's driving that loyalty. So let's simplify this. We think it comes down to two things, a proven performance and absolute transparency. Now nobody's going to invest once, let alone eight, nine, 10 times, 
if we don't do what we say we're going to do, if we don't consistently deliver on outcome. So what does proven performance look like? And we break it down here. Over 95% of our portfolio across the country, across Australia, is occupied. Now, the occupancy there is made up of the right tenants. 75% of those tenants are ASX listed, government tenants, whether federal or state, or national entities. So that means that the tenants paying the rent, which underpins our investor return, is reputable. Now, those two statistics come together to, to form this 19.16% internal rate of return, or an average annualized return, if you'd like, which means that on the syndicates that we've acquired, strategically added value to and sold, the average that we've generated for our investors over that life cycle is 19.16%. Now, the other side of this coin is the transparency. Now, investors want to know that at any stage during the life of any asset, and really during the life of our relationship, that we are absolutely transparent in every turn and that we've got skin in the game. But it's more important than that. The transparency is also, well, how does our business benefit from creating the outcomes that, that our investors are enjoying? And that's why we've developed and honed and, and crafted over the last nine years. And these are not my words here the best fee structure I've ever seen. It's the only management fee we've encountered across our industry, which completely aligns the investor outcome with the manager's decision at every turn. Now, if you want to know more about this, you'll find a whole host of information in the deal room here, but it's not just about an aligned fee structure. We have to go one step further and personally invest. We, as owners, we're investing. As employers, we're investing. And our team members, are investing. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, it shows that we all believe in the outcomes that we're so proudly generating for our investors. So why the pathway 12 unit trust? And again, we'll start with the end here. Our investors came to us with a very specific mandate. They wanted a bulletproof trust. They wanted something which could sit in their portfolio and in our portfolio as a bedrock to their fortunes and which could really deliver those stable returns that we're always after. And then they got a bit greedy. They wanted something where we saw an enormous propensity to add value along that journey, which meant that we had to look at buying assets in counter-cyclical locations at competitive prices. So how do we go about creating a bulletproof trust? Well, we believe it's the perfect intersection of investment opportunity and investment structure. Now we've gone out and we've approached our research and our investigations and our due diligence in a very pragmatic and an obsessive way to create a compelling opportunity which answers the demands of our investors. It answers that question of bulletproof trust. And it starts with three assets. We've got a fully leased industrial asset with a massive chunk of land in the core industrial precinct of Welshpool in WA. We've got a fully leased industrial asset with fantastic connectivity to the arterial road network servicing that Southwest Brisbane corridor and, and le securely leased to a national -wide, uh, nationwide logistics user. And then we've got an anchor. We've got the Centrelink anchored suburban office asset in the very relevant demographic of Mirabooka in Western Australia. Now for each of these assets, we've specifically sourced them off market and we've needed to understand the relevance of the location the industry, the state, the tenant, the property itself. And not only that, but then we've needed to ask ourselves, why would a tenant want to occupy these premises as opposed to the ones next door? And what we've done is we've culminated these assets into a trust which provides our investors with an annual five-year five return of 8% per annum. Um, they're backed over 50% of the income by ASX-listed federal government and state government tenants which is a fantastic security. And then we've used, and we've really leveraged here, a true, truly tried and tested investment principle in diversification. Now that's what you want in times of uncertainty. We've got three properties, seven rental income streams, two different sectors being office and industrial and in two different Australian states. So again, you can see how we're answering the questions that our investors posed when they said bulletproof trust. And it's been very well received by our investors where we've got $2.8 million that we are reserving purely for new investors to experience this. Uh, the rest of the investment has gone to those reinvesting investors of ours. 
So the second part of this coin is the investment structure, as, as we've mentioned it. And really, what are the investors wanting? They're wanting safety. They're wanting reliability. There's no point having a beautiful asset where your capital is actually at risk. No, they're wanting the integrity of the leverage, the integrity of the gearing, the integrity of the loans that we're taking out, non-recourse, the integrity of our fixed interest rates. So we know with certainty our cash flows. These are the things that the investors are demanding from us. And this is that perfect intersection of structure and opportunity. Now in the middle of a global pandemic that is threatening economies around the world, and we're seeing it right now, is there a more secure tenant than the Australian federal government? Now the most beautiful part about the syndicate is that it's already been tested by the market. And it's not just holding its own, it's firing on all cylinders. When we go ahead and create this trust, there's always that question of, are we gonna get the outcome that we want? Are we gonna get the outcome we expect? So what's beautiful about this particular asset, this particular trust, is that we've culminated it and offered it to our investors in the middle of a coronavirus. And in the meantime, we've got tenants knocking down our door, asking to be the neighbor to Centrelink. We've got an ability to add value right out the gates. So as I said at the start, I hope I've excited you and energized you to the same extent that we are about this opportunity. And I hope that our 88% reinvestment rate and the information we've just briefly touched on here was enough to intrigue you, just enough to wonder whether this is in fact the opportunity you've been waiting for, to jump into the deal room and connect with us to find out more. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cal. Next on the agenda is Tim Hart, Director of Active Property Group. Active Property Group is working with both wholesale and retail investors who are looking to take part in quality investment opportunities across the two key areas of commercial mortgages and property. Opportunities that have been thoroughly analyzed by their team of experienced managers. Over to you, Tim. Tim Hart here and thanks for joining me. Uh, so I'm Tim Hart and I'm the Managing Director of Active Property Group and I'm a full-time property investor since 2006. Um, so who is Active Property Group? Uh, so we're a group of active property investors. Uh, you can see on, on the picture there is a, a team meeting we had. Uh, we flew everyone to, to conference last year to Daydream Island uh, to catch up. Uh, it's a really good good group of people um, and we, we specialize in private mortgage investments as well as commercial property investing and ultimately our, our uh, process is to provide high quality investments opportunities for our investors. Uh, now there's a lot of talk in the marketplace at the moment you know about the pandemic the COVID-19 and I'm getting a lot of investors asking me Tim where, where do I invest my money you know get, during these hard times um, and so what I wanted to, to talk about is what, what can you invest in? And we've got two investment options now that we think are going to be absolutely amazing, not just in this current environment, but for the long term. So the first option we had is a commercial property opportunity up in Rockhampton. So if you don't know where Rockhampton is, it's up in uh, far north Queensland in Australia. And um, so we've got an office building here. There's, there's no retail exposure. Um, quite an impressive looking building. Um, and you can see on the right there, it's actually, we've got a, a, a picture on the map and it shows that it's actually very, very well located. It's sort of in that little heart in the CBD of Rockhampton itself. Um, now, any particular commercial property, it's only ever as good as its tenants. So just to go through them, we've got uh, Elders Insurance. So they're owned by QBE, uh, one of the biggest insurers in Australia. Uh, we've got Artius, uh, who have a focus on uh, getting employment for people with disabilities. Um, we've also got Program Skilled, uh, they employ around 12 uh, to 20,000 people Australia-wide, um, massive company and, and all around um, finding jobs for people. The next one is our biggest tenant is Sunshine Coast Medical. 
So they're a government organization and uh, their sole focus is getting people access to the medical treatment that they need. So it might be someone who needs a nurse or a doctor sent out to their house. So you can imagine in, in times like this that they're going to be absolutely inundated um, and they're going to be very, very busy. So, and, and again, not just now, but also you know, into, the, into the future as well. This is one of 31 locations that they've got. Uh, the last tenant that we've got there is National Jobs Link. So they're a non-for-profit uh, and their whole uh, ethos is all around upskilling people and getting them ready for, for the workforce and finding them jobs. So you can imagine now with a lot of people losing their jobs uh, and even in you know, post-pandemic world, um, people are going to be looking for jobs. So where we've got you know, four out of the, the tenants that we've got are all focused around jobs. That's why we can see at the moment this is going to be phenomenal tenants. Um, and the, the other big one, especially with, with Rockhampton itself, is we can see some phenomenal growth in Rockhampton itself. Um, the, big, the big driver for growth is population growth. And to, to drive that, we've seen that there's a lot of infrastructure spending, not just at a state level, but also at a, a federal level. Uh, and the other thing we really like about Rockhampton is it's got multiple employers. So it's the, it's the beef capital of the world, so of, of, of Australia. Um, so you know, it's got a massive agricultural industry. It's got tourism. Uh, it's got mining. It's got manufacturing. And it's also got military. Okay, So it's got the Shoalwater Bay military facility up there. Uh, that's just going uh, under a, a billion dollar upgrade. Um, so that's why we believe it's got that nice long-term growth in, in it as well. But there's more information in our information memorandum on that, all that as well. Now with this particular property, uh, we settled it a couple of months ago. We actually managed to warehouse around 515,000 units um, and we're just making them available now. And it's, it's quite an exciting time because it's literally in the last couple of weeks, we've had three of our tenants uh, come to us and, and you know, not like a lot of other tenants that are asking for rent discounts, these tenants are saying, hey, we want to stay on longer. So they're extending their leases. So we've got Elders Insurance who, and you can see there, their lease expires in June. Um, we're just this week, we're signing a brand new three-year lease with them. So they're going to be pumped out to 2023. Uh, coming down last week, we got contacted by Program Skilled. Again, they're coming up for renewal in three months and they've, they've said, yes, they want to stay on. Um, so we're just doing uh, some negotiations with them. And lastly, we had National Jobs Link, who just have their um, uh, lease expiring for one of their tenancies at the end of March. And they've asked that if we can just extend that lease to coincide with their other uh, lease that they've got there. So they're going to go out to 2022. So this opportunity uh, has become a lot better um, in that with a lot of the uncertainty of these tenants coming up for renewal has been taken away. Uh, and one of the beautiful things of, about this particular investment um, is because we've got such low interest rates at the moment, this property is actually paying 11.2% return to our investors, okay? Now that's net of all fees, charges, everything. That's net in your pocket, okay? And that's from day one, because uh, it's fully tenanted, it's all ready to go. Uh, now we do, as I said, we do only have 515,000 units available, um, and we are selling them for the exact same price that we sold them to our initial investors a couple of months ago. So they're just a dollar each. Uh, the minimum investment is just 25000 And if that sounds like something of interest for you, please head over to our deal room, the APG Commercial Property Fund deal room. Now, the other option we have is our uh, private mortgage investing. And in the current environment, we've seen an absolute huge increase in demand for mortgage lending in this uh, current, in the, in the pandemic that we're seeing. Uh, we've done more lending uh, this month uh, than we have usually you know, in a six month period. So we're seeing huge demand for those uh, that, that need funding um, in this environment. And our real focus is on conservative loan to value ratios um, and also borrowers who have a strong repayment strategy. Now, what we've got is there's two different ways to invest in our mortgage products. The first one is direct, where you can invest directly into one single mortgage. Now, this is not for everyone. This is really for only those that have got experience in mortgage uh, investing. Uh, you need to be a, a wholesale sophisticated investor, and the minimum investment is $250,000. Uh, the other option we have is a much more our preferred option with most of our investors is our pooled mortgage trust. Now this has a minimum investment of only $10,000 and it doesn't matter if you're wholesale or sophisticated, you can also be retail investor. 
any, literally everyone, is, as long as you've got a pulse, so you can invest in this fund. Um, and the beauty of this one is that, that it's pooled across multiple loans. So I've just got a couple of stats I want to share with you about our pooled mortgage trust. So the first one is that our average interest rate that, that uh, we're paying um, to our investors is 11.3% per annum. Um, that's the average for, from all our loans. And that's the net return to our investors after all fees, costs, charges, the lot. The, the, the most important one for me, especially in this current environment, is the risk that we're taking. And you can see that, that our current weighted portfolio loan to value ratio is sitting at just 60.89%. So on average, we're only lending you know, just over 60% the value of a property. Okay, so pretty conservative stuff um, to, be able, to be able to get those sort of returns. So in, in this environment, I mean, if you can find a better risk return ratio than that, um, then yeah, I implore you to take it. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And the last one I've got there is the number of loans. So we've currently got 28 loans. So when you invest, it doesn't matter if you're just investing $10,000, your money is spread over all 28 loans. So that's 28 different borrowers, 28 different types of properties, and it's different uh, sectors, different states. So it really diversifies your money. So that's why we see it as a great strategy in this current environment to really take a lot of the uncertainty out of it. So if you'd like to participate, as I said, the minimum investment for this is only $10,000. So head over to our APG Pooled Mortgage Fund uh, Trust uh, deal room, and you can find out some more information there. So as we look forward to hearing from you and uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks, Tim. Our next speakers are Greg Barlett, Leon Kutsovasilis and Mark Austin, co-founders of Lenthouse, the global commercial real estate marketplace platform. With the use of automation, data, analytics and digitization, Lenthouse is successfully giving borrowers and lenders a whole new way to connect and exchange. Greg, Leon and Mark will dive deeper into the benefits of their platform and how you can take part in this opportunity. Multiple parties are involved in the refinancing process for commercial property loans. Property owners have relied on a small number of lenders and find it difficult to collect and provide the information lenders need, and it's a slow, costly process. Lenders have a lot of work on their hands processing loan applications, finding it difficult to source quality deals. Property owners then find it difficult to interpret loan offers to get an objective apples for apples comparison and can never be sure they got the best deal. Commercial real estate is a huge industry. There's $22 trillion of investable real estate globally. There's an addressable market of loan arranger fees of $44 billion. We'll target the top 5% of that market, an obtainable market of $2.2 billion. We're tackling the Australian, UK and Singapore markets, then we'll move on to the US. Lendhouse is focused on borrowers in the middle market, loans of $20 to $80 million because this market's not well serviced by the larger players. We'll provide them with sophisticated portfolio management tools for better performance metrics and debt forecasting. The benefit to lenders is better transparency on their loan books via accurate performance metrics. Through the tailored Lendhouse dashboard, clients will get loan transparency, choice, speed and certainty in the real estate ecosystem. COVID-19 is a black swan event that's devastating global markets. Communications and transactions can only be done online given severe restrictions on gathering size and this is causing turmoil for borrowers and lenders. Borrowers are worried they may not get access to finance when they need it 
because of lower rent and falling valuations. Lendhouse addresses this fear by providing access to 200 global lenders with a unified refinancing process from bid to settlement and continuous debt valuation and loan book forecasting. Lenders desperately need accurate, timely financial information about their loan exposures and they need access to good risk-adjusted deals with the ability to execute in a safe, secure online environment. As an innovative, fully online solution, Lentaus is launching at the right time. We've designed to digitally transform the commercial property loan process from bid to settlement, so parties can, for the first time, engage in complex negotiations, get secure, verified access to up-to-date data, manage collaborative processes, and execute faster at a lower cost. Property owners currently face a number of challenges when it comes to financing their properties. We believe that delivery of a marketplace solution that addresses these pain thresholds should lead to quicker financings at a lower cost for property owners. For the first time, property owners get real choice with online access to a competitive international pool of lenders, something that doesn't exist today. In parallel, lenders, brokers and service providers get access to a larger qualified deal pipeline more deals in much less time with the same or less staff. Our service consists of an online financing marketplace called Lenthouse and a secure data repository called HouseVault, linked to a network of service providers such as brokers, valuers, surveyors, and legal firms. We use advanced technologies including artificial intelligence and powerful APIs to allow easier integration with other systems. HouseVault's advanced analytics deliver a single source of truth. Our API strategy is key to embedding Lenthouse into the commercial real estate ecosystem. Lenthouse facilitates the end-to-end -end financing process, whilst our competition only tackles small portions of that process. Since Lenthouse sits at the centre of the real estate ecosystem, it's well positioned to build on its strong unit economics, driven by powerful network effects. Lenthouse will become the trusted source of data at the asset level right down to the tenant leases. We plan to open up our platform to other companies and startups to write value-adding applications. Greg Bartlett and Mark Austin founded Cashworks, a fixed income fintech marketplace which was listed on the ASX in 2017. Leon's based in London. He's sought after for strategy and technical due diligence for private equity and venture capital firms in Europe. We're supported by an advisory board with deep commercial real estate financing and industry experience. David Ryan, Tony Musa and Leon Reardon have over 60 years of combined experience in global commercial real estate from multi-billion dollar office developments and international syndicated loans in eight countries. HouseVault is deployed into a client site as a SaaS solution, seamlessly integrated with Lenthouse, but the charging models for each component are different. The HouseVault's tiered SaaS subscription model is well known, while loan transactions on Lenthouse attract a loan arranger fee. We'll be adding other fee events in time for new workflows, reports and services procurement. We have a current pipeline of loan deals of $240 million to be completed by October this year. We're finalising an alliance deal with one of the big four accounting firms. This alliance will kick off a supply of middle market deals of 20 to $80 million from the enterprise division to Lendhouse and give us access to 200 global lenders. We're raising capital for our full commercial launch and to scale Lendhouse in Australia, the UK and Singapore. The first stage of the offer is for £250,000 or 500,000 Aussie, the remaining 50% of our seed round. The second stage is for 2 million pounds or 4 million Aussie, and we expect that our seed investor will follow on for that round. We're in an important phase right now with client transactions totaling 240 million in major alliance discussions, which will help scale us more rapidly. And with COVID-19 adding urgency to getting a digital platform up and proven as fast as possible. We're looking for investors who can invest to support near-term transactions and ongoing platform evolution. If you have an understanding of this huge sector, it would be a plus. And if you have already got proven backgrounds in scaling marketplaces globally, 
We would love to talk to you now. Next up is Panthera Group. Panthera is a retail, property, technology and investment management group focused on shopping centers, mixed-use developments, hospitality groups and online digitized retail. This multifaceted operation is providing a truly unique opportunity to our investors. It's my pleasure to welcome Rodney Tim, Director of Panthera to discuss this further. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Rodney Tim from the Panthera Group. So our business is all uh, developed around our passion for retail technology and property. And we use this to integrate both physical and digital re uh, retail platforms to create the mall of the future. We're providing this opportunity for investors to participate alongside our cornerstone investors in a cash distribution of 6.8 per annum running yield, averaging at 9.4 over the five years with an 18.5% uh, equity IRR over that investment period. The challenges in property uh, investment in the retail world these days is the traditional owners tend to be defending their bricks and mortar retail. And they see digital and online retail as a major competitor rather than embracing it. And therefore they develop token um, platforms and they don't partner with their retail tenants to support and enable them to get into the digital world. Hence, the retailer margins are cannibalized by the Uber Eats of the world, retailers close, and we find foot traffic and that starts um, diminishing within the traditional shopping centers. And that means the returns go down and values go down as well, obviously. Retailers, particularly the smaller ones, have very digital capacities in order to be able to move to the new world. They don't have the time, the capacity, or the capital to invest and anchor tenants tend to have their own platforms. So we end up in a, a shopping center with a disjoint digital footprint with different digital providers and a lot of rich data related to shopper and shopper behaviors are lost. Customers have a poor shopping experience. They pay for multiple deliveries and we can't promotion tar uh, target promotions. We at Panthera believe we've got the solution to that. And for retail investors, the smaller to medium investors, their challenge is how do you get inv involved in a major shopping center uh, because of the scale? And they tend to invest in single tenant investments, which means that they are susceptible to tenancy risk as well as competition. They don't have the retail management skills and also um, they don't have the digital transformation or property development skills. This is the basis of the Panthera model. So our investments are all focused around four key criteria, cash flow returns, uh, investment security, uh, value add ca capability and long-term growth. So from day one, there's a cash flow return for our investors. Our investment security is underpinned by our anchor weighted average lease expiry. The value add normally comes along with development uh, capability within the, the property that hasn't been uh, realized, leading to our long-term growth. We've identified Warawong Plaza and we purchased it for 156 million as a key center that fits into those criteria. We've got strategic location and infrastructure, 45,000 cars passing every day, adjacent to Port Kembla, which has been transformed. We've got a strong growing trade area um, as the demographics of the area change. And there's a focus from New South, government, New South Wales government for regional economic growth. So that, as you can see, is um, fairly well demonstrated in our investment criteria. Economic growth, proximity to infrastructure, population profiles and changing and improving population profiles, integrating into the community and what we call the irreplaceable location. This is not gonna happen again soon. Warawong Plaza 
is a 43 and a half a thousand square meter shopping center on a 6.9 hectare site with Coles, Big W, Target, Hoyts and Aldi as the key anchors. We're purchasing it for 156 million, which is way below the replacement cost of 22.7 million. And we're spending about 20 million or $90 million through the investment period to enhance the property. Um, we use our three horizon strategy to release value. Horizon one is focused on baseline operational and tactical efficiencies. Horizon two is more around building precincts, hospitality, medical health and well-being, distribution, logistics, hubs, uh, hubs community and uh, learning and family entertainment. And Horizon 3 relates to releasing the unused development rights um, and the centre expansion preparing for our exit or liquidity. All the while we are ro rolling out our own developed Omnishop platform called Rivershop, which does digital marketing, loyalty, last mile delivery, community presence and general on the shop. Our track record, previously, we've had shopping centers, um, which we bought and sold over a period, 93 million in total, with a weighted IRR of 44.2%. We currently own and manage and transform in four shopping centers, Maitland, Riverside Plaza, Raymond Terrace, Goulburn Central, and Key Street in Auckland, with a weighted IRR currently at 28.3%. The Warawong Future Fund is focused on the Warawong Centre and is all about how do we use that three horizon strategy using the non-discretionary and diversified income, enhancing pedestrian flow, improving and refurbishing the centre, creating the precincts for valuation and income uplift and getting ready to exit. The Future Mall uh, is in a single asset closed end unlisted unit trust with an external um, trustee, MSC, from Melbourne. Um, we are raising 100 million in equity, of which this particular uh, pitch relates to 15 million for the small to medium wholesale investors. The fund is a five-year fund with a two-year liquidity window. And as we said before, our first year return is 6.83, 9.4 return annual uh, average over the period, and an 18.5 um, IRR. As with all investors, there is risk. There's general investment risk, investment fund risk, property risk uh, related to general cycles and specific property and tenancy. We have mit mitigation and management strategies for all these in place. Um, the Panthera Group, about us, um, the key principles in the Panthera Fund Management is Maria, um, one of the co-founders of Panthera Group, together with Shaquille uh, Kamal, who's the CEO, and myself as the Director of Fund Management. We are driven in our group by three key principles, being passion for retail, technology, and property, and everything we do. Integrity, to build long-term relationships, entrenched relationships with all our stakeholders, and consistency, to provide those consistent performances. So we invite you to invest with us. Why invest with us? We have a customized approach for our investors and we look to see what their needs are. There's sound fundament, fundamentals in our investment strategy and the properties we buy. There's transparency. We are happy to share with our stakeholders what we are doing and how we're performing. Innovation, this is manifest by Rivershop, which we've now been building for the last two and a half years and spent a couple of million dollars on governance with an external trustee to ensure that everything is done appropriately and correctly and visibly. Co-investment, we always put our own money in our investments to co-invest. We have value add strategies for asset optimization and releasing value. And this is all underpinned and manifest by our performance to date. I invite you to CRISP to have a look at what we've uh, been doing and look more at this particular investment opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Rodney. Next up, I'm excited to introduce Francisco, Novaka and Paul. Directors of Silicon Roundabout. This venture fund specifically backs early stage ventures with advanced tech IP, also known as deep tech. Apart from the fact they can boast an extremely experienced team, Silicon Roundabout is the largest tech community in Europe.
I'm Francesco from Silicon Roundabout Ventures, and I'm here today to talk about an opportunity to invest in early stage technology startups in deep tech in the UK. The opportunity comes from the ecosystem itself, as well as our own backgrounds. And the ecosystem in the UK in deep tech is one where cutting edge tech startups that are developing proprietary, proprietary tech IPs in advanced fields like artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, cybersecurity, uh, they're struggling to grow through their seed stage, especially because there are not enough technical funds that can understand technology at that stage. They struggle then after they do manage to get funding to do R&D through connecting to corporate partners and institutions and hiring software developers and engineers in what is a very competitive market. And so a lot of value is lost, even though the UK is the largest tech market, VC market in Europe, accounting for nearly half of all the deals down there. Uh, it's a, the fast growing market in the world, uh, in VC, and it's the third country after China and the US in terms of size with a large deep tech slice of the market, which is also growing. There is again this loss of value, uh, which creates effectively an opportunity for investors, savvy investors to capitalize on. And we wanted to start to help this ecosystem. First, uh, we decided to launch a community. Again, really out of passion. And this is a project that we've been carrying out for nearly a decade now. We've grown into become the largest tech community in Europe uh, with over 14,000 members, with over 5,000 startups and over 4,000 engineers. And really this community has been about connecting engineers, connecting entrepreneurs, connecting stakeholders to really empower and foster innovation. And by doing this, we've realized that this community could really connect the ecosystem. So we're now launching a fund, a VC fund to supercharge and monetize the ecosystem and this brand that we've built. Our mission is to back ambitious deep tech team that have innovative IP rich tech solutions and they are targeting growing international market opportunities of $200 million plus. Thanks to Silicon Roundabout and the community, as well as our expertise and experience on the field, we can access, select, and help to grow these deep tech startups in the UK ecosystem. And in terms of access, we're best placed based on our community because we've grown this huge network and founders really want to work with us. We've built friendship with them. They trust us and they can see how we can support them and add value over time. So whilst we've built this community, that empower to connect to founders and really uh, access the best deals effectively, which we then need to select. And in terms of selection, this is where our background really comes into place. I'm a software engineer myself and I'm here today joined by Novika, our COO and partner, and my co-GP Paul is also co-founder of Silicon Roundabout. And really because of our unique set of skills from the software deep tech, actual operational knowledge and to the enterprise building knowledge at seed stage, founder knowledge, as well as mechanical engineering background, we've really got to a point where we've established a system to select the best deals and then help them grow. We can help them grow by accessing talent, by connecting them to the right supply chain stakeholders like corporate partners or universities and support them building their business from the ground up. So Paul, do you wanna tell us how we can unlock these opportunities um, for investors watching? Sure, so um, we unlock this opportunity by uh, being able to, again, tap into our community that we've been building for almost uh, nine years now. Um, and it's a community that's very unique because uh, we've been uh, managing and uh, mentoring startups and connecting them with developers for over ten, uh, almost uh, 10 years now. And um, uh, this opportunity allows us to see the ideas come from very early stage, from just an idea to actually uh, them taking off. Um, and by focusing on early stage startups, which is pre-seed and seed, uh, we have, which have very proprietary technology, uh, whether they're algorithms in machine learning, uh, computer vision, or uh, hardware patents in IoT uh, or robotics, uh, this allows us to capture the growth at an early stage uh, when a startup has a valuation of just you know five to seven million um, 
pounds to uh, a 10x when a startup can be uh, 50, 60 million pounds. Um, by focusing early stage startups, because we understand the technology, uh, we're able to capture the growth and return higher um, higher uh, returns to the investors. Um, and how we're different, we're different again because uh, all of us have this uh, computer science, entrepreneurship, and uh, um, uh, startup background that allows us to understand uh, the technology and allows us to understand what will work and what technology will be resilient in good times and bad times. Uh, most of these uh, technologies focus on efficiency, uh, reducing cost, uh, reducing uh, headcount, which are the kind of startups that you want to invest in uh, uh, down times, also in the good times. Um, and this is, puts us into a uh, superior position compared to other venture capital funds that have a background in finance and are more resilient at later stage at Series B, C and up, when a startup is more, uh, the startups are more proven and they have revenue. Um, but in the same time, they can capture uh, lower growth because uh, the stage of the startup. Now, we got you want to tell us a bit more about the team and the operations of the fund. So thanks, Francesco and Paul. As, as both of them mentioned, we are pretty complementary. Uh, where Francesco is a tech lead, uh, Paul is the finance lead, and I'm the ops lead. Based on our backgrounds and, and our know-how, having said that, all of us are pretty techy. Uh, so our skills are complementing each other, but also helping to make the whole uh, picture. On top of three of us, there are also venture partners, which are bringing the knowledge and, uh, and specific skills, particularly in reviewing of the deep tech startups, which is not as easy. Uh, and, um, and as such, it gives us the knowledge of the due diligence. Uh, Francesco, you might want to move to the next slide. Sure. So here is a little bit of our uh, track record. Majority of this is mine, uh, which starts from angel investments, uh, uh, then to bigger venture capital investments in round A's and round B's, and is finishing with corporate venture capital investments, including uh, even in acquisition of $45 billion. On top of that, there are a couple of other uh, track records by our venture partners, which shows that we're uh, skilled and that we understand this market very well. Please move to the next slide. Uh, on um, so basically, our value record, our ad record, is relevant for what we're doing. Uh, all three of us are very techy, uh, which is required for a deep tech fund. We're not coming from investment banks uh, as is, and and just looking at this as a simple finance investment, where uh, we are here to to invest in the market that we know very well. And the next slide. So uh, to close, uh, basically we have all the elements already in place with a legal advisory firm, with custodian bank and auditors, fund administrators, and uh, the entire back office that is required to run such kind of fund. Yes, Francesco, please take over. Perfect. So thank you, Paul, and thank you, Novika. And uh, now, really, it's about building relationship with yourself. If you're an investor that believes in these technologies and would like to get access to the early stage market in the UK, you can help us be part of this project to invest in entrepreneurs today. And likely as we grow uh, into fund two, fund three, and really being long-term relationship uh, over time, we wanna be transparent and get you involved and get you to profit with us of this opportunity that is growing and that we see day in and day out. Our pipeline is already in place. So we've already assigned uh, a substantial part of the, the portfolio of the allocation that we raise rise into to startups that are part of our community and we've seen grow over the years and we've been tracking very closely of course we also have a reserve follow-on capital uh, as well as uh, more room to invest in disruptive startups over the next two to three years the fund terms are pretty standard. We're raising a 50 million fund and um, we'll be happily discuss a bit more about the existing uh, soft commitments and harder commitments, especially the cornerstone commitments in place you might want to uh, know more about. And we've got a whole data room with a virtual portfolio to discuss more about the pipeline. And should you want to get access to the fund terms and documents, again, we'll be happy to disclose those. Uh, the, Fee structure is pretty straightforward, and again, um, 
super, super keen to start relationships early so that we can build momentum, go towards first closing uh, that we are targeting for uh, a few months down the line. Thank you very much for watching. From ours is all. Thanks again here, to Paul and Novika, uh, for joining me today. And thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Next up is Colon Street Value Fund. Colon Street, which has delivered approximately 19% cross returns per annum since inception in 2016, is centered around wealth preservation and growth. Their success is attributed to their unique methodologies and investment processes. Here to dive deeper into these methods is Rob Hay, Head of Distribution and Investor Relations. Hello, my name is Rob Hay and I'm Head of Distribution and Investor Relations here at Collins Street Asset Management. Today, I'll be introducing you to the Collins Street Value Fund, a highly successful Australian equity strategy, which has delivered 10% per annum gross return since inception over four years ago. Importantly, in these volatile times, we'll also be discussing in brief our views of the current state of play with the markets and our top three strategies for navigating the volatility in a profitable and successful way. By way of background, at the Collins Street Asset Management, our primary focus and purpose is to solve the no need of private investors and their families to preserve and grow their wealth, both now and for future generations. This is really important to us because we recognise that capital preservation for successful family offices, entrepreneurs, business people and private investors has to come above and beyond everything else. And then from there, where we're able to generate superior medium to long-term returns, we'll do so, do so through the pursuit of prudent and bespoke investment opportunities, focusing on the Australian Stock Exchange. At the Collins Street Asset Management, we do believe in doing things differently. If you're looking for a different return to the index, a different return to other Australian equity fund managers, you have to be prepared to go where others don't and do things others won't. So for us, as an unconstrained manager, we'll invest in companies that we want to own, not companies that we have to own by virtue of an index or an investment mandate. We beha believe in behaving like investors and not speculators. I'll be talking a little bit about our key investment personnel shortly, but for us, we view ourselves as a fund run by investors for investors. We think about risk very differently in that for us, risk is the permanent loss of capital. Risk isn't some artificial construct relative to an index. And we believe most strongly that there has to be an alignment of interests at every step of the value chain between us as a fund manager and you as an investor, but also between the board of directors, between the CEO and their shareholders as well. And that's something which is very much in the DNA of our investment decisions. Our key investment people are Vasilios Piperglow, our Chief Investment Officer, Michael Goldberg, Managing Director and Co-Founder, and Anton Lawrence, our Chief Strategist. All of these people have built businesses up from the ground, run businesses and sold businesses very successfully in the past. And we believe this gives us a competitive advantage over a lot of other fund managers, because when we're looking at a company, when we're looking and interviewing a board of directors or a CEO, we're thinking about it as a genuine business owner in our own right. And so for that reason, we take a very pragmatic, a very practical and a very robust approach to our research and due diligence. As an Australian equities fund, uh, we're focusing on capital preservation first and foremost. And we believe that as a wholesale only fund run by investors for investors, that we can add substantial value in these volatile times. The next series of slides will be talking about our top three strategies for navigating the volatility uh, and how to do so in a profitable way. 
First and foremost, hope is not a strategy. It's very important to go into the current markets with eyes wide open and being prepared to look outside the box and turn over rocks that perhaps others aren't in pursuing opportunities. First and foremost, whilst there is a degree of volatility and there is some uncertainty how long that will last for, it's important to get paid to wait. Now, getting paid to wait in the current environment does not mean relying upon the traditional blue chip dividends which people will become accustomed to. There's a lot of discussion at the moment around whether or not banks in particular will be having to cut dividends. And we've seen many other companies have to slash dividends, defer dividends, or even cancel dividends already declared in order to shore up the balance sheets. So be very careful in this environment focusing on yield because that can be a trap. Cash is one of the greatest destroyers of wealth over the long term. And with interest rates at historic lows here in Australia, again, it's insufficient to rely upon interest on term deposits or at call accounts in order to get you over the line. At the Collins Street Value Fund, uh, we have the opportunity to leverage our relationships with company management across a wide range of industries to originate, negotiate and execute upon our own convertible note ideas. Now convertible notes uh, originally uh, are categorised as debt funding, but they give the holder of the note the opportunity to convert back into equity at a time uh, negotiated as part of the note and at a price or on terms negotiated as part of the note. So this can be a way to provide funding to a company and then potentially convert to equity at a substantial discount, uh, which can be quite attractive and can provide a way of getting set in a position uh, which perhaps private investors can't do on a direct basis. We also believe in this environment that less is always more. Uh, there's always discussion about an efficient allocation of capital in investment markets with so many different pieces of news flow being distributed on a daily basis and with things moving so quickly, it's very easy to get caught up and uh, try and be all things to all people. For us, it's about an efficient allocation of attention and focusing on those companies and those opportunities that we believe have the strongest opportunity to recover quickly and generate returns for investors. Now, in doing so, it's important to have a pre-existing knowledge of industries and companies uh, and confidence in company management and boards of directors to execute upon what they say they're going to do. There's been a lot of changes go on. Uh, ASIC in particular have relaxed some of the rules uh, and some of the oversight uh, of companies when it comes to how they can trade and report. Uh, and there are also some new rules, or I shouldn't say new rules, but relaxed rules around continuous disclosure as well. So there can be some consequences about going into companies which you haven't fully researched. And in our view, it is better to research a smaller number of companies well, rather than a larger number of companies in lesser detail. And so for that reason, within the Collins Street Value Fund, we only have 20 positions in our portfolio. And our portfolio looks very different to the market. Uranium, for example, is one thematic which represents 15% of our portfolio. The price of uranium is up a good 30% this year and is the number one performing commodity uh, as it currently stands. And that's certainly given a tailwind to our portfolio and performance throughout the month of April thus far. As a fund, we have 35% in cash that we've built up, largely out of concerns for the share market over a period of time, but which gives us the opportunity to bite back and bite back with force in terms of generating returns for our investors. We can be opportunistic, we can be selective, and we can go hard where we have the right opportunities before us. And certainly, deeply discounted capital raisings will provide an opportunity to do that. An overview of our current portfolio is here and some of the things that we look at. And most importantly, you should have an alignment of interests. The Collins Street Value Fund charges no fixed management fees and are entirely success driven. So we only get paid where we generate positive, absolute returns for our investors. We've got a strong track record, as you can see from this slide here. Uh, and most importantly, my closing comments would be that conditions like this are where you can earn or lose a substantial amount of money. Uh, for us, focusing on the downside is important. We do have the cash, we have the ideas, and we're opportunistically deploying capital into the markets over the weeks and months ahead to maximise returns for our investors. Moving forward, 
Uh, we have a range of webinars which we'll be promoting. We're available for one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, to discuss our fund in more detail. And as a monthly priced fund, we have a range of cutoff dates here between now and the end of the financial year for people looking to get set. If you'd like further information, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact details are here on this slide, or you can access us through the Crisp Deal Room or the Wholesale Investor Platform. Many thanks for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you in due course. Cheers. Thanks, Rob. Our next speaker, Sean Fox, is Managing Director of RIC. RIC is an investment manager specializing in developing high-yielding investment opportunities. Their unique approach involves working together with their project partners and investors, understanding the specific needs of both the parties and then creating bespoke investment opportunities to suit their needs. Speaking at the Emergence Showcase, we've recently attended the Emergence 2020 event uh, where I was speaking, which I believe there is a small Sean just here, uh, which is playing in the background. I'd like to talk a bit today, uh, not only about what we do, but also the success that we had at the last uh, Emergence event. So, firstly, what we do, uh, we own a collection of companies, mostly in the financial services industry, but also in uh, venture capital. Uh, we own Rate Capital, which specializes in creating our joint ventures um, and purchasing our uh, assets and also does some mezzanine uh, lending to direct wholesale clients. Uh, we have our RAIC uh, funds management which deals with our international funds movement um, wholesale structures. We build financial structures here in Australia. Uh, we also uh, do quite a lot of international structures and work on some infrastructure projects. There's quite a lot that we're involved in. We also have uh, our main retail focusing company, which is called the Retirement and Investment Centre. Uh, what we do there is it's a, it's a bit of an education platform. It's direct to retail clients where we raise funds in a crowdfunding manner. Uh, the current investments that we're raising on there is the Pleasure Point Mine Sandstone Quarry, which uh, if you uh, log into our um, back office, you'll be able to see this video that's playing here, where I speak quite in detail about uh, our methodology in purchasing uh, these assets and what we're doing there at the mine, which is actually quite quite exciting. So please log in to our deal room and have a look uh, what we've got going on there. Uh, so the Emergence uh, 2020 event, which was just just a fantastic um, place for us, that was our very first event with the wholesale investor guys, which we just love dealing with. Uh, we came away from that event uh, with about 75 uh, unique inquiries. I think we're quite fortunate that we as a business, uh, spend every gamut of financial services um, and also involved in, in a whole bunch of different joint ventures. So depending on which hat I'm wearing of the day, if I'm actually lending money uh, or if we're borrowing money. So we, um, from that event, from those 75 unique um, inquiries that we had, we're actually working with about 25 different people now, uh, either helping them secure funding for their projects uh, or taking um, funding that they've got to put into our projects or others and secure quite a lot of joint ventures um, in that market. So we, we absolutely loved, loved the event. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is, is most definitely uh, REIC capital or rate capital as we call it internally. Uh, we are looking for, this, it's quite a unique um, space that we're in right now within the world. We're obviously in a, in a global recession and as all of you know, uh, this is where quite a lot of investments are made, money changes hands. Um, and a lot of wealth can be created. We're seeing just a phenomenal amount of interest right now from international funds that we're bringing into the, into the country, um, a huge amount of deals and flow. Uh, so we're at a stage right now where we are looking for more investment um, and investors. We're also looking for more deal flow at the same time. So it really depends on which hat we're having, um, having wearing at the time. Now, um, if you'd like to have a conversation with us, uh, you can access us through our deal room or direct links as well. Um, if you are an investor that is looking to secure 
some money within Australia or looking for some great opportunities. Um, all of our opportunities that we have come with a, a fixed interest component, um, also you know, secured by, by direct assets, but we also secure um, some equity in everything that we um, lend to. Uh, that is our philosophy within there. We like to shed, uh, share that equity across the entire pool so you keep everybody from the value chain on both ends connected. Um, the, uh, some of the specific projects we have at the moment, I, I did mention the sand mine uh, earlier, have a look at that. We've also got a theatre we're involved in and we've got some um, waste energy plants that we're putting together. Uh, internationally we're looking at um, quite a few different projects at the moment also and we've just recently started REIC uh, Gold Fund. Uh, what we're doing there is we've joined ventured with about 24 um, different gold mines uh, where we're providing the infrastructure to get involved and then we're starting to vault gold as well. So I think that's probably enough information to um, quite squarely confuse you about everything that we do do here at REIC. Um, effectively we do pretty much anything. Anything that's uh, commercially viable in nature we will have a look at. Um, so look, feel free to get in contact with us. Uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you shortly. Uh, and as I said, if you've got funds that you'd like to put under management or if you have projects or something that you needed funding, um, look, give us a call. We, we don't really have any sort of set, set mould. Give me a call, have a chat with me, and we can go from there. So um, thank you again all the guys there at Wholesale Investor putting together these showcases and just everything amazing that you guys are always doing. And I'll um, talk to you all in the deal room soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean. Speaking next is Dr. Joseph Mukano, Managing Partner of Verge Healthcare. Verge is a seed-focused fund centered around sourcing global technologies for the emerging Asia market. With a track record alluding to future success, Dr. Joseph will take us through a deep dive of their current offering and the pathway to getting involved. everyone, thanks so much for the opportunity to present to you today. I'm Dr. Joseph Makanu, and this is what we've been up to. We are the world's first seed-focused venture capital fund investing in healthcare problems relevant to emerging Asia. We are Singapore-based, and we've been around for one and a half years. We're small by design and have a target of 15 to 20 portfolio companies. We've invested in eight companies to date, all making very good progress, and six of which are COVID relevant. Previously, we've been doing this with our own money for five years, which has had real financial and social impact, and the desire to take this to the next level gave birth to this fund. We are quite different from most VCs in the region in that we're all coming from industry and we've been entrepreneurs ourselves. We have a large global network that brings us tremendous deal flow and have for many years worked directly with a large number of multinationals, some of whom are still supporting us today. Investing at the seed stage lets us buy low, sell high, and actively shape the critical first few years of a startup. And we understand that a seed stage VC fund isn't for everyone, and that's okay, but if you're patient, want to invest in big healthcare problems affecting millions of people and want to get access to some great companies at low valuations, then this fund's for you. We've been saying for years that healthcare is broken and needs to change. Over half the world's population still don't even have access to basic care. It's silly that in this day of 5G and mobile sensors, we still need to physically see the doctor for most things that aren't life or death matters taking away precious time and resources from the things that are. It's unfortunate that it took a global pandemic for the world to figure this out. In much of the world, we are short of the needed infrastructure to deal with this today, let alone during the status quo. On a more positive note, out of this crisis, we are seeing the golden age of digital health, diagnostics, and telemedicine beginning. 
and Asia is where the opportunity is. We have 4 billion people that are getting richer and more informed, but also older and sicker. This will drive demand like we've never seen, and we're missing much of the human talent and physical infrastructure needed to address this. We are already under investing in healthcare by over a trillion dollars. Technology is essential to addressing this gap, and the best solutions might be anywhere in the world. We've looked at a lot of companies in the past years, and because we're global, we can be quite selective. Our core team consists of Ed, Joyce, and myself. I've been a scientist, programmer, and medical device entrepreneur, so I understand tech very well. And through my consulting work across 20 countries, understand the problems common to many health systems. I've helped set up several funds through my past careers and have been an angel investor for the past six years. Joyce knows hardware inside out and the supply chains that make it all work. She began her career with Apple and was responsible for some of the products that we all know and love. She then became an entrepreneur herself, successfully exiting one company. Ed was a lifelong investment banker and corporate finance guy before noticing that most of his family members were suffering from diabetes. He was then driven to found and build Health to Sync, one of Asia's most successful digital diabetes management platforms with 400,000 diabetics across Japan and Taiwan. And we're not just investing, but we're also quite active in community building as well. We couldn't do this without our expert advisors, venture partners, and supporting organizations. They really know their stuff and they can really add value to our portfolio. For example, Dr. Stanley Lee from Ding Shangyun has 2 million doctors and 150 million patients on his platform. Lastly, through our professional networks and extensive travels, we've met a lot of key stakeholders that can help take our startups to successful exits through providing downstream investments, distribution channels, strategic partnerships, and eventually acquisitions. You can find more about our investment process online, but I do want to emphasize that early stage is super risky, and this is why most investors don't like to play in our space. 75% of all health tech deals are Series A or later, so you can imagine how crowded that gets. Our expertise and hands-on nature lets us confidently play early, and that gives us an edge. These are already some of the things that we've done for our companies, and you'll note that we managed to also get quite an attractive valuation as well. To give a sense of the kinds of problems we search for, I want to pose three what-if scenarios. What if you don't have to die from Alzheimer's, your loved ones don't have to die from Alzheimer's anymore? Or what if your child had their life saved because you detected their serious pneumonia from the comfort of your home? Or what if you're suddenly in a small village with no doctors for hours around you and you start to see people in the village suddenly getting sick? Solutions to these questions would be quite important, wouldn't they? Well, we've invested in some companies that address these exact questions. ReadySpec on the left has developed a hyperspectral camera that can look at amyloid and tau proteins in your retina. They've got five clinical trials running around the world and the interim data is very promising. They've attracted some seriously awesome investors like the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation backed by Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos and the Estee Lauder family. They successfully closed their pre-A round a few months ago, giving us a 60% bump in value. Lung Passport is a smart digital stethoscope that costs only $12 to manufacture. It listens to your lung sounds to determine what you might have, and it does this in a way better than most doctors. COPD is the third leading cause of death in the world, and pneumonia is the leading killer of children under the age of six. And yeah, there's coronavirus around us. So to detect these diseases early can mean the difference between life and death. We're happy to say that they're now finalizing their pre-A with a German VC. REACH52 is providing healthcare where it doesn't exist today. They provide the software backbone and train community health workers through affiliated NGOs to educate, screen villagers, and provide essential medicines and services. They're active in rural Philippines and Cambodia, expanding to India, Indonesia, and Myanmar, and they're actually profitable. This is our portfolio today, and you'll see that we led most deals. They're all doing quite well, uh, with, and, and six are relevant to COVID, with two helping today directly, four are negotiating next rounds, 
three are revenue positive and one already has a priced up round. And they're making the news along the way. We've developed this thesis over five years with our own capital and it's working. Our past investments have had a total increase in value of 2.6 times involving some pretty big investors and they've touched the lives of over 3 million people. Our pipeline is rich and we have deals ready to go today. We're fundraising to catch these opportunities ahead of us as well as take larger stakes in our existing portfolio. We just passed our fundraising target. However, some of our investors need more time because of the sudden illiquidity caused by this emerging financial crisis. We will give them the time they need, but in the meanwhile, there are good deals to be made right now. And we invite you to join us on this unprecedented opportunity. Thanks again for your time. And if you have further interest, you know where to find us. Thanks, Joseph. Speaking next is Doma.com, the first ASIC registered and ASX listed fractional investment fund in Australia. Doma.com has designed an asset allocation solution to investing in property with amounts as small as $2,500. Their investment opportunities fall into the categories of residential, commercial and rural properties. Arthur Novitus, CEO of Doma.com, will now dive deeper into the details of their offering. Enjoy. My name is Arthur Namides, and um, today I'll be uh, talking about uh, several of Domacom products that uh, may interest uh, the investors. I'll start off with general advice uh, warning. Um, so clearly what I'm about to say is no, that doesn't constitute personal advice. It's general product advice only. Um, at a high level, uh, Domacom uh, has two key product lines. The first is fractional investing. And as the name suggests, uh, what we do is we uh, enable investors, uh, including SMSFs, to pull together, to syndicate together, to acquire large lumpy assets, um, which include property and uh, direct mortgages. Uh, now that's what we call fractional investing. The other product uh, that I'll be talking about today is uh, our senior equity release. Um, and and, and th what this product does is uh, it's Australia's first um, product that uh, is licensed as a financial product that enables retirees to sell a fraction of their house. Um, so yeah, and that hence it's called equity release and uh, I'll be talking about that as well. Start off with uh, the first uh, uh, property uh, project that I'd like to uh, describe is rent to own. It's, uh, it's quite a novel product, product that we're in the throes of uh, launching right now. So effectively what we're doing is we're uh, disintermediating the distribution channel. So developers normally are happy to pay about 10% of uh, the, the, the purchase price to distribution uh, channels uh, to sell their product. So what we're doing is we're taking that 10% and we're splitting it across um, investors and tenants, um, which is uh, the unique feature here. So firstly, from a tenant perspective, um, what, what, what we're providing is that the tenant gets gifted 1% equity in the Domacom sub fund uh, per year that they are the tenant. So the day they move in, they get 1% and then thereafter they get 1% um, um, for up to maximum of 10 years. And so one of the key elements here is that it's a co-ownership model and uh, it creates uh, home owners or in property investors, not just permanent renters as some of the new um, you know, uh, developer led products. It's a very innovative model that we're not aware it exists anywhere in the world. So, so from a, um, a, a investor, why, why is it of interest? The other element is, as I said earlier on, part of the distribution um, uh, margin that the developers have, um, we use to gift equity to the investor. So for example, if the investors buy 200,000 units of the Domacom sub fund, um, they'll get another 30,000 units gifted from the de developer. And, and this is very simple. It's we're taking some of the developer margin and giving it to uh, the investor. The other uh, element of this is that uh, particularly relevant at the moment with the uh, vacancy risk and et cetera, is that uh, you know, we have a, 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 
department that's probably got much lower, uh, lower risk of vacancy simply because if there's uh, um, you know, one, one prospective tenant and they can choose from three properties and one of them gives them equity um, in, in the ownership, which one would the tenant go for? So, so, so basically we, we would expect a lower uh, vacancy risk in the product. Um, it's also a low risk tenant because they're much more likely to look after the uh, property because they're shareholders. And then thirdly is that they're natural buyers of the secondary market. So as you, you know, some of you may be aware, we've got market maker permissions and we implemented a secondary market just like the ASX uh, where people can buy and sell units um, in, in the properties that they own. So, so it's a very uh, attractive uh, investor proposition. The other element is that from an investor side is that the developer is providing some of the equity. So they're retaining equity. So they, they've got skin in the game after the transaction. So that's uh, quite a novel feature of the product. It's also, uh, you know, attractive for advisors because there is a uh, advisor syndication fee possible as well. Um, here's an example of the first property that uh, uh, we're looking to syndicate. Uh, it's a one better in Gordon, uh, New South Wales. Um, it's uh, 565 is the purchase price. Um, we still uh, have to complete due diligence, which is valuations, building inspections, pest inspections. But uh, at the moment, that's what the uh, indicative price looks like. Now, assuming a 60% loan to value ratio, um, effectively um, what, what we're going to do is uh, the developer will receive 80% of the uh, 565 as cash and they'll receive 20% um, in units. So they'll receive 113,000 units in the Domicom sub fund. The investor will receive 161,000 uh, units roughly. And then on top of that, the developer will uh, give 24,000 units to the um, um, investor. So that's the, the, the bonus um, effectively. It's, it's, it's like having a discount um, purchase. And so, so and, and as you can see from the 280,000 that we're going to raise from um, for the campaign, 40% uh, is provided by the vendor equity and uh, the investors are providing um, 60%. So, and there's obviously transaction costs uh, included, stamp duty, rent reserves, fees, et cetera. Uh, the, the senior equity release, uh, as I indicated earlier on, uh, this product um, enables the investors um, to buy a fraction of a retiree's house. So for a retiree, they, instead of borrowing from a reverse mortgage, they can sell a bit of their house and they can either take it as a lump sum or as a monthly um, uh, payment. And so and from an investor's perspective, uh, why is it attractive? Well, they receive rent. Um, now, we charge the, uh, the retiree 4.4% uh, nominal rent, of which 3% goes to the um, investors. And so, and we use the capital, uh, or some of the capital that we've bought of, of the retiree to pay the um, um, investors. So now, the average need of funds is about 15 years. So what investor has a horizon? Well, self-managed super funds, um, this is an attractive vehicle because it gives 3% rent where the, the money is in the cash account within the Dumacom sub fund to pay it. Um, and then the SMSF gets the long-term capital growth of that portion of the property as well. And SMSFs generally have a horizon of 15 plus years. So that's uh, one of the features of the product. So as I said, investors receive 3% income. And um, as I said, the cash is held within Domicon, so it's cash backed um, and they receive the capital growth. So it really suits those, uh, you know, a portion of an SMSF that's targeting, uh, you know, long-term income and growth. Now liquidity occurs when the um, investor, or when the retiree sells the house, we get the, our share of it and we return it to the, you know, the investors proportionally. And obviously, on an interim basis, investors have uh, the liquidity option of our secondary market. So, at a price, um, you know, it's 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 probably likely there will be a buyer. So, you know, depending on uh, you know, the need for selling, and uh, so we have opportunities right now for investors. Now, the other element of uh, Dunacom is that, as I said, we syndicate properties, and the first is rent to own that we're featuring today. Um, and the, uh, the, 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 the other uh, syndication opportunities we want to talk about are mortgage backed loans. And effectively, Dunacom can syndicate not just property investments, it can syndicate direct personal, um, not personal, uh, residential mortgage loans or uh, development loans or land banking, et cetera. And so they've got a low loan to value ratio of less than 60%, generally about 50%. And and uh, the returns are four to nine percent um, net 
of all fees. So it's very attractive. I'll start off with a couple of opportunities we have right now. Um, we've got several uh, uh, loans for land banking and these, these are um, effectively um, farms that uh, have been acquired for you know, 10 years by investors. And the loan to value ratio, the first opportunity is a $1 million six, six month loan. It's, a, it's effectively a 20% loan to value ratio secured against uh, the land that we own. So the fund owns the land and there's also a cash reserve of 1.5. So, you know, and the interest rate's quite attractive, 9.5. 0.56%. Second is a $2.1 million loan, uh, similarly at 9.56%. Um, and uh, it's, it's one year uh, term and the loan to value ratio in this investment is 52%. We have a subdivision um, coming up, a second uh, stage two subdivision where we're completing stage one at the moment. It's a $2 million loan at 9.56, one year terms against, uh, it's secured against uh, stage two and three growth um, of the subdivision and with approximately 50% loan to value ratio. Like all of our uh, investments, uh, it has an internal uh, interest reserve. In this case, it's 12 month interest reserve. Um, we have a little farm in uh, um, um, Tasmania where it's 175,000 uh, loan. It's a 31% loan to value ratio um, and investors will receive 5.06% after all fees. And uh, the, the Sydney rent to own product um, that we just uh, highlighted earlier on, there's a mortgage opportunity for that same property where it's, uh, we're gonna borrow 339,000. So we'll syndicate that loan, it's 5.06%. Um, and the LVR is about 60% and it's got a four month uh, rent reserve. So thank you very much. And um, so go to our uh, website, dharmacom.com.au to uh, look at uh, these and other opportunities. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Property and Funds Virtual Showcase. We hope you enjoyed the presentations. From here, there's a few things to do. The first one, any companies which you enjoyed their presentation or you'd like to find out more, simply on the Chris page, this Chris streaming page we've set up, We've got the contact details available for you to easily click through, access their Chris deal room, and also communicate with the, the presenters directly. So we highly recommend that you do that. The second part to it is, is how we grow is through word of mouth. For the last 11 years, we've built an incredible ecosystem across Australia, Singapore, and the UK by having our attendees, having our members, and having our ecosystem share with other people their experience with Wholesale Investor. We encourage you to share the company, share the contacts, because the way it works is that we know that in your network is between five, 10, 15 people that are either relevant to our business or relevant to the companies which are presented. So we recommend that you share that opportunity with them so that we can help build and grow this ecosystem together. The third part is I just wanna say thank you. So without you as an attendee, without our sponsors, without our supporters, and without the companies that are presenting, we don't exist. Now is such a powerful time for us to be as proactive as possible in working with companies that are still actively creating opportunities for investors and also for team members and supporting and getting behind them. Once again, thank you very much for joining the Property and Funds Virtual Showcase.
Thank you.